Hello, Molly. Oh, that's a nice one. Hi, welcome back. I have been starting a lot of seeds already. I've been at it for about a week. There's just a few things that I want to do today. And I already have all my pots filled in front of me. The things I wanted to start today were things that are a little bit more unique. I have sweet peas first. And sweet peas are not edible, but we grow them for the flowers. Beautiful flowers. Now the plants look just like your traditional peas that you would eat and you're gonna grow them the same way. So all of this you can apply to edible peas as well. But sweet peas are for the cutting garden. I might leave them out in the landscape. I might cut some to bring in the house. It's nice to have that option. I have a few varieties that I picked up. These are burpee seeds. Where did I buy these? Oh, these were given to our garden club. These were free seeds. I have two packages of these Heavenly Goddess mixed colors, sweet peas. And I have two from Whistling Prairie Flower Farm is in Saskatchewan, Canada. So I'm not sure where their shipping covers, if it goes to the US or not, but you can find that info on their website. So from them, I have Carlotta, and I also have Sir Jimmy Shant. I also have a small baggie of sweet peas that are unlabeled. I don't remember where I got these, but if I have enough pots, I'm gonna do those too. So that is four varieties of sweet peas. And to make sure I don't mix them up, I have some labels and I'm gonna write those out first. Sweet pea Carlotta. It is so exciting to be seed starting again. I waited a little longer than usual just because we were away for a week. Sir Jimmy Shand. All of these varieties are new to me. I've, in the past, I've just grown your generic sweet pea, whatever I've picked up off of the rack at a garden center or sometimes at the grocery store. This one is Heavenly Goddess. We have quite a few of those. So those are gonna take up six pots for sure. And I'm going to plant these in three inch pots. Sweet peas root out pretty quickly and their roots go down fairly low too. If you have something like a root trainer or a deeper pot. Sweet peas do really well in those. And you can soak the seed. Soaking is not going to germinate seeds that otherwise wouldn't germinate. It's just going to speed up the process a little bit. So where you can soak or scarify even, which is to rough up the coat or nick it a little bit, I find it unnecessary. Okay, so I'm going to do Heavenly Goddess in the first two. These are all reused pots. Hi Molly. Sir Jimmy Shand in one, Carlotta. Now I might have a row left over. I'm gonna title this sweet pea question mark. Now sweet peas are frost tolerant, which is why I'm starting them right now. And they really do grow best out in a natural environment. Now right now, I'm looking at a yard full of snow. The ground is frozen. It's been really cold. We're zone six. The ground is generally frozen for a couple months out of the year. It usually thaws out mid to late March. It is still February at this point, but we are getting unseasonably warm temperatures starting tomorrow, actually. Warm and sunny and above freezing even overnight for most of the next two weeks. So my plan for these is to put them out in the greenhouse the second they germinate or the second that I see them popping up through the soil as long as it doesn't get too, too cold. But in that case, I can always bring them back inside. So the first one is, the first two are the heavenly goddess. So these are the burpee seeds. These ones require scissors. So now we get to see how many seeds are in these, this packet. Oh, quite a few, okay. I probably should have only cut open one pack. These seeds are good for a couple of years too. So I'm not worrying about planting all of them. I am though going to put five in a pot and I'm going to thin that to three. That's only because I have a lot of seed. They are climbing vines, so they don't take up a lot of space at the bottom. And it is generally okay to space peas or sweet peas a couple of inches apart. One, two, three, four, five. I'm placing these on top of the soil and I'm pushing them down. And the general rule of planting seeds is they should be about twice as deep as their diameter. So the bigger the seed, the deeper they're gonna go. Now, since I cut open that second bag, I'm gonna put my leftovers in here and I'm gonna tape this closed and save this one for next year. Or if I see questionable germination on these, I'll start these ones right away too so that I have enough. I often use painter's tape to label my 
uh, bigger containers like this. That came from when I was planting seeds with young children and discovered they like to play with the tags and move them around on me. It's just a habit I've kept, but it works well. There. All right, next up, oh, now we get to the good ones from Whistling Prairie. Now these seeds look exactly the same, but there are way, way fewer of them. 13, there are 14 seeds, so I'm just gonna split them sort of evenly between these pots. My plan for these is to germinate them indoors in my seed starting room downstairs. And the minute I see growth, as long as the weather's cooperating, they're gonna go outside into my greenhouse. My greenhouse is not heated, but it's made of wood and recycled windows. It's fairly well built. It has some stone on the bottom, so it retains heat really, really well. I'm in the process though of redoing that floor and honestly for those who've been following me I have not done anything on that in the last two to three months. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, there's two less seeds in this one so these are just going to be four, four, and four. And if they all pop up I might even just leave them there. So yeah, I haven't done any progress on the greenhouse but it is going to be sunny and well above freezing all weekend and I don't have anything pressing to do. So I think that that is going to happen this weekend, I hope. Coffee break. So we've done those, and now we have the unnamed ones. And it looks like there's definitely enough for all six pots of these. And those are labeled sweet pea question mark. So these will grow perfectly fine out in the greenhouse, even if it does dip below freezing, they will be perfectly fine out there. Although if it gets too cold, I will bring them in or cover them. But you'll see more of that when we start working out in the greenhouse this week. There will be at least one dedicated greenhouse video, so follow along for that. If you haven't subscribed, I would love to see you part of this community. Just sneak that in there while I'm putting these seeds in. I'm putting five to a pot for these ones too because I have lots and I don't know how old these seeds are and I still have some left over. So we used up all the Whistling Prairie seeds and I still have some of these. So we started with five seed packets and we have two. My goal in seed starting is always to empty seed packets. I have so many seeds. I think I counted 300 and some the other day. I always like to have it down to under 100 by the end of the season. That doesn't always happen. I hear you purring, Molly. All right, push these down into the soil. The soil has a bit of moisture in it already. My watering can is downstairs though, so I'm going to take these down and water them. Two, three, four, five, that is it. All right, sweet pea tray is done. And if you are curious, this is my list of things I have started so far. I have started stock, sweet william, larkspur, and snapdragons, a lot of snapdragons. I have started eight trays of ranunculus. Now these aren't seeds, these are corms. There are eight trays of ranunculus and two trays of anemones sprouting in the basement, which will also be potted up and moved out to the greenhouse within a couple of weeks whole bunch of carnations, my mechanopsis, the rest of my blue Himalayan poppy. These seeds tend to work much better when they're fresh. I'm not sure if those will pop up, but I don't like to waste seeds, so I started those two, and I started a whole bunch of feverfew. So these two trays are going to be for vegetables, and some that I like to start early in the season are green onions, or bunching onions, spring onions, spinach, and lettuce. And knowing me and my inability to remember to label stuff, I have a red lettuce so that at least I will be able to tell the difference when the spinach and the lettuce come up in the same tray because I am going to use one tray for that. Now the onions, I think these are some of the seed that came free from my garden club. I'm going to sow these very heavily because I will be bumping them up into three inch pots just like we put the sweet peas in likely and I'll be separating them. I think I have a few of these seed packets actually. There are a ton of seed in this seed packet. That is a good teaspoon or so. Now onion seed, I find they pop up pretty similar whether or not you use a heat mat. I might put them on my heat mat because I do have space. Wow, that is a ton of seed. These can be easily separated though, which is my plan. So sowing them very heavily will not be a problem. Now I'm going to put a tiny bit of vermiculite on top of these onion seeds just to hold them down. They don't need to be covered that much, but actually the lettuce, 
I will not cover. Lettuce does need light to germinate. Now those sweet pea seeds were really big and so we pushed those down half an inch or so, maybe a bit more into the soil. And they'll break that surface of that soil really easily. But lettuce seed is much smaller. And that's usually a good clue. The smaller the seed, the more shallow you need to plant it. And very small seed don't, doesn't need to be covered at all. Oh, there's quite a bit in here too. There's a ton of seed in here. If you think about how big a lettuce plant can get, there might be 200 seeds. This is only about a quarter of the seed packet. Definitely look different than the onion seeds. They're longer. The coloring is obviously different. All right, so I'm going to put lettuce on this side. And this is sometimes called broadcast sowing. I'm just sprinkling the seeds on top. And then later on, once they have a couple of sets of true leaves and they, it's obvious that they have a good root system, I'm going to take these out. I'll separate them and I'll put them into plug trays. There. All right, so there's the lettuce. And spinach seeds are much bigger. So those I'm going to push in a little bit. I have a pencil here. I'm actually going to make a bunch of random holes and just drop the spinach in. No more than a quarter of an inch or so, I think. I sometimes grow greens in pots so that I have greens in the late fall and early spring. It's been a really busy year. I haven't done that. And I'm really not liking buying greens and green onions from the grocery store. It's just not the same. And rarely do you find greens that are fresh enough. I mean, I suppose if you're used to buying greens from the grocery store, they might seem just fine. But when you're used to growing them yourself and you see what they're like when they're freshly harvested, it's really hard to go back to grocery store produce. Just using my pencil to push them into the holes just a little bit, just barely below soil level. So there we go. And when I water them, that's going to fill in that little bit of space on top of the seed. Perfect. So if all goes well, I should have a good healthy amount of greens and green onions within about six weeks or so. And yeah, that seems like a long time, but when we get there, I'll be really grateful to have them. And hopefully the weather will cooperate and I'll be able to get these out into the greenhouse before long. And I cannot wait to get out and start working on that floor. I guess I have to now, the clock is ticking. So for my seed starting setup in the basement, I have LED grow lights set on a timer. They're gonna go on at 6 a.m. in the morning. They shut off at 10 p.m. at night. I do prefer to bring things outside as soon as possible. In general, if you're new to starting seeds, keep in mind that there's three things that a seed needs to germinate. It needs the right temperature, it needs moisture, and it needs oxygen. And oxygen is key because you can very easily keep your seeds too wet. In general, they don't need nearly as much water as you think they do. Things that are surface sown like the lettuce, you have to keep a bit more of an eye on because it can dry out on the top. But my seed starting success really picked up when I started to water my seeds a lot less. And that was a game changer. Too much moisture can lead to seeds rotting before or even after they start to germinate. Because of course, the more water there is in your soil, the less oxygen, and that is just as important. Those tiny little air pockets in your soil are not a problem because that air is going to be incredibly humid from the moisture that is already in there. And as far as the correct temperature, that depends on the seeds you're sowing. Some seeds will germinate really quickly on a heat mat and some will not germinate at all if the temperature is above 55 to 60 Fahrenheit. That would be the larkspur. So some things will be on a heat mat, some things will be in the coldest corner of my basement, some things I might even put in a Ziploc bag and stick in the fridge. So if you're new to seed starting, it's a good idea to start with just a couple of things. Make sure that you read up on their germination requirements so that you can give the seed what they need and don't overwater your potting mix. So now I have to get this cleaned up. I actually have about 20 more seed packets that I want to start this week, but that's going to be for another video. And I think I may even get out to do some filming outside this coming week. So with that, I'm going to get these downstairs and watered and under my lights, I'm going to clean up this mess and it looks like I may see you outside for the next video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.